Super Mario 64's castle is one of my favorite hub worlds in any video game. It was bizarrely empty and it sort of felt like a museum, but I spent many nights just running around its corridors. There's just something about this castle, man. I don't know. I also feel like Super Mario 64 is more popular now than it has ever been before. My Minus World Amigos and I play it all the time. And it's truly awesome to still be navigating its lands this long after its release. So many close races have taken place in this castle on Friday nights, and it has truly been a blast. Save you, Mario, don't worry. <laughs> they swarm. Oh. They swarm. Ah, okay. so I, I'm, I'm through too. Oh, 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 there's fire. Oh my god. There's fire. Todd Rogers makes my parents divorce. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is Todd Rogers? Who? I don't actually know. Oh, you don't know the video? You don't know who Todd, Rod Todd, Todd Rogers, Rogers no. is. A Anyways, I pretty much covered this castle from top to bottom in plenty of my other videos. From the mysteries of the paintings in the Mario universe, to the perplexing nature of the castle's current state in Super Mario Odyssey. However, there's one thing I haven't touched on yet, but it is still sort of in line with my childhood imagination. Now this thing in particular would have been a great addition to my 6 Nintendo 64 Mysteries series, but I want to spend a little extra time on this one. Reason being is that it isn't so much of an unsolvable mystery that we invented as a kid, but more so just a really peculiar curiosity. What I'm referring to is the night sky painting in Super Mario 64. Now for those of you who don't recall where this is exactly, it's available once you unlock the third region of the castle. After defeating Bowser at his lava level, you unlock the upper floors. After clearing this region, there's a staircase with a star door at the top that takes you to where Tick Tock Clock is at. At the bottom of that staircase is where this painting is. It's a one-of-a-kind painting within the castle, and unlike all the other paintings in the castle, this one can't be jumped into. Now, you might be thinking, but Swanky, there's cloud paintings all around the upper floor of the castle that can't be jumped into. Well, you'd be right. But the issue with that stance is that the graphic of those paintings is actually used for a few different warps. If you're jumping into Rainbow Ride or even Wing Mario over the rainbow, both of these sky graphics are used as your entry point. For all we know, we're jumping into a painting that's just lying face up on the ground. Beyond that, technically our warp to unlock the wing cap is also that same graphic. It's merely stretched across the ceiling of the room. So when it comes down to it, this is really the only painting in the castle that you can't jump into. What's even more interesting is that this painting sort of reminds me of the backdrop of World 5 from Super Mario Bros. 2. That was one of my favorite worlds in the game because of the night sky in the background. So I think seeing this remind me of that right away. This graphic we see in the painting is derived from the walls of the room of Tic Tac Clock though. So that makes me wonder why they would decide to use it down here, since it wouldn't make sense to frame a backdrop as art if it was found in the room right ahead of it. In Super Mario 64 DS, we have a similar situation, except the cloud paintings in the room are now the upper parts of the stars of the Tic Tac Clock room. The painting in question remains the same, being the same slice of wall it was before. But why put this here? Why not just recycle another painting from elsewhere in the castle like the designers did for the remainder of the room? What's so special about this? Obviously it's been a good 20 years and I still don't have an answer, but I wondered if originally you used this painting to warp to the upper part of the castle, possibly before the staircase was inserted. Beyond that, I think about where this painting would go if it could be jumped in. What would the area look like? The closest thing I could envision was a starry sky and a bunch of clouds. It'd be very similar to the Winged Mario over the rainbow level, but you'd be navigating the night sky. I got a similar feeling from the treetops of Piano Village at night, or the infinite cosmos from Super Mario Galaxy. I don't know what their intentions were for this painting in particular, or if there was ever an intention, but one thing for sure is that I wondered about this painting for years, thinking about the places it could take me. But now that I dumped the nostalgia bomb on all of you, let me know what you think. What do you think the original plans were for this painting? What would the level look like that it led to? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hey Paisanos, it's the Super Mario 64 show. Love Super Mario 64? How about bizarre Super Mario 64 challenges? Like Goomba Bowling, a 4 vs 4 Babam Battlefield Brawl, Peach's Secret Slide. Except it's full of a lot of things that want to kill you. We have cork box challenges, green shell challenges, and so much more. Be sure to swing over to my second channel, Swanky Box Alive, for all the latest goodness. A little birdie told me there might be some interesting Super Mario Galaxy challenges in the pipeline too. And with that, thanks for tuning in to this painting spectacle. If you haven't given it a gander yet, I've been uploading tons of really cool Mario content on my second channel, Swanky Box Live. Anyways, thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers.